more deadly than all forms of cancer combined, heart disease is the number one killer of women in the United States. An estimated 43 million women are affected by this disease, and one in three will die from it each year. Fortunately, TGMC continues to lead efforts in research, prevention, and treatment of heart disease, providing knowledge-based solutions for women of all ages in our community. Please join us as we explore the importance of heart health and discuss the best practices to keep your heart healthy throughout life. Joining us this evening is Dr. Craig Walker, an interventional cardiologist at TGMC and medical director and founder of the Cardiovascular Institute of the South. All right, as the intro said, our guest tonight, Dr. Craig Walker. You've seen him many times on the program. Dr. Walker, thank you for being here. Thank you, Martin. All right, we're going to start with women. The leading cause of death in women is? It's heart disease, and this is a misnomer. Every woman knows about cervical cancer. They know about breast cancer. But by far and away, the leading killer in women is heart disease. Now, it's interesting, Mark. It's a little different in terms of when it kills women. Up to age 65, cancer is actually the leading cause of death in women. But then 65 on, heart disease overwhelms that and just mm -hmm. blows by everything else. And in fact, the statistic many do not realize, in the last decade, each year, more women in America have died of heart disease than men. So it's a big problem and women are not protected from this problem. It's a very important problem for them to understand. Kid Craddock just died, the famous disc jockey, James Gandolfini, although they're both men, it brings a big focus on this problem, but women have to focus in on it too. Why is it the leading cause in women? Well, it, to start with, uh, women have a little bit of a different pattern of disease than men. It does tend to start a little bit later in life. It appears that early on some of the hormonal factors do give women some early protection. We're starting to lose a lot of that though in today's world because women smoke, They're, they've changed you know, from the traditional habits. Because in the past, women did not die as commonly as men. But I've said they've now passed them up. So one, the incidence of disease is increasing. But that being said, if we look at autopsy specimens later on, women do have less coronary blockages than men as a whole, yet more of them die. And it's because the disease process is different. In men, the big vessels on the outside of the heart, and I say big, it's in a relative sense. These are still pretty small vessels, but they're vessels we can easily see when we do an angiogram. These vessels develop blockages which we can easily see, and we can treat those things. We treat them with stents or things such as that. These tend to build up pretty slowly. Women, on the other hand, often have uh, their disease start as microvascular disease. Now, if you think about this, uh, the arterial system is like a tree. You have the trunk, which is big, and then you have the branches, which break up a little bit, and then you finally get all the way out to the twigs and the leaves. Women have a disease that often starts in the twigs and the leaves rather than in the trunk or the main branches. Now, the problem with that is, as these small vessels are diseased, you don't see it if you do an angiogram, yet it does diminish overall flow. And so then if they develop a little bit of a blockage in an artery on the outside of the heart and the plaque ruptures, it often clots, resulting in huge problems. So it is very important to detect the earliest disease, uh, which is microvascular disease, very important to protect in women as well. What are some of the new diagnostic tests? When you go through CIS, you all have all kinds of equipment and new machines and new methods, but what are some of them? Well, in women in particular, I think there are two tests that have really just totally changed the way we look at disease. To start with, we have to figure out who's at risk, and the risk factors are the same. Smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, family history of heart disease. But traditional tests like treadmill tests, nuclear tests, even angiograms, may miss disease in women. There are two tests that I think have, have shown great promise in women. One of those is a test called a calcium score. It's one of the easiest tests ever to do. You simply lay in a CT machine for about 10 seconds and it will tell us 
if there's any evidence of calcium in the coronary arteries. Calcium in the coronary arteries is something that should not be there. If it's there, it gives us a warning and tells us, pay attention. There's a second test, which is, uh, again, a great test, doesn't have any radiation or any other exposure, called a cardiopulmonary exercise test. What we do with this test is we have a person pedal a bicycle, but while they're doing that, we actually have a mask on, and the mask measures how much oxygen they breathe in and how much CO2 they blow out. Now, why is that important? Well, by determining uh, that, we can determine what's happening to the output of the heart. A normal response is that the heart should beat faster and stronger with exercise. All of us know that, that have ever run, mm -hmm. your heart beats faster and stronger. Well, what happens if you've got heart muscle starvation? It beats faster, but at a certain point, it doesn't beat nearly as strong. And that tells us there's a problem. And we can tell that from this test. So these are two very easy tests, very simple tests. They're not very expensive. And they give us a great idea who's at risk. We, we all have pain sometimes and we go get checked. But who should get tested for this? Well, I think certainly anyone who is of uh, the right age. Okay, let, let's start with anyone over age 50, in my opinion, should have some kind of basic screen. And certainly by age 70, should. But any diabetic, anyone who's had high blood pressure, anyone who's had abnormal blood fats, anyone who's ever smoked, and absolutely anyone who has a family history of heart disease. Now, the more of those risk factors you have, the more you should get checked, and the earlier you should get checked, because if we want to prevent the disease, it's best to prevent it not when it's full-fledged, mm -hmm. severely, uh, severely blocked. Mm -hmm. We want to get to it early before there's a problem, and then in those people, we can treat them without ever having to go to the cath lab. That's really the best treatment of all, it's prevention. Let's isolate on women again. Treatments are utilized in women with evidence of mitral vascular disease. What are some of them? Really just medicines to start with. If we find a woman with microvascular disease, the first thing we do is lower cholesterol, control blood pressure, make sure they quit smoking. All of those things are very important. But in addition to that, we would use drugs that improve microvascular blood flow, calcium channel blockers, the drug renolazine, which has been shown to make a difference. And in those patients, we'd be a little more apt to put them on perhaps an aspirin a day to help prevent clot formation. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break here from Terrebonne General Medical Center and our sponsors, and we'll come back. Very important discussion with Dr. Craig Walker. Don't go away. We'll be back in a few short seconds. no matter their health care needs, from OB to emergency room visits, rehabilitation, and everything in between. More people choose TGMC for life. Terrebonne General Medical Center. It all begins here. All right, welcome back. Our guest tonight is Dr. Craig Walker, world renowned. You've heard his name many, many times, and especially on this program, he's been around quite a bit. And we're talking about uh, cardiovascular and women. Let's continue if we could. Uh, differences in the outcomes with stenting and bypass surgery in women. What are those differences? Sure. Well, women traditionally don't do quite as well. There are many reasons women have worse outcomes than men once they have heart disease. To start with, they often are undiagnosed. People ignore their symptoms. They don't find them. Secondly, the diagnostic tests, which were traditionally used, aren't so great in women. Regular treadmill tests, nuclear tests, even angiograms. But in addition to that, women are typically smaller. And as you're smaller, you have smaller vessels. And so as you might imagine, a small pipe is more likely to plug up than a big pipe. Right. And so if you do a bypass, it is more likely to block up. Plumbing 101. Yes, huh? it is. It's plumbing yeah. 101. And, yeah. and it, it has to do with flow is related to the fourth power of the radius. So really, very, very minor changes in the diameter of a blood vessel result in profound differences in change. That much times itself 
four times. And so it's, it's a big, big difference in terms of what we see in flow. So even minor blockage in a very small vessel plugs that vessel right back up. And so uh, the outcomes aren't quite as good because of that. And there may, be a, there may be a third element there. That third element is, I mentioned earlier, women have this microvascular problem. Well, if you have slower flow in a vessel, it is also more likely to clot. Mm -hmm. All right, my next question is, is interesting because years ago when HTV started, one of my first guests was Dr. Craig Walker. And I remember, ah, y'all were just starting out, y'all were just hitting the ground running, but what a success story. By the way, congratulations, 30 year anniversary, but what a long journey, but what a great journey. Y'all have done a tremendous job, 30 years. Thanks, Martin. Take us through the 30 years real quick. Did you ever think it would get this big? No, I had hoped, it had always been my dream to come back home. I had offers to go a lot of places around the world. And uh, it was always my dream to come back home and to establish um, a center and, and to impact outcomes. You know, if there's one thing that I'm most proud of, when we moved back here, HOMA was a black dot on the map, and that's by Medicare statistics, not by, not by mine. It was the number one highest mortality of all the catchment regions of Medicare in the whole United States. In the last three reporting periods, it's been number three lowest. So we went from dead last, which I think there are 176 regions, to third best. Now, I'll be happy when we're first best, <laughs> okay, but, yeah. but third best is a big deal, especially when you consider one and two, or one and two many years ago, and a lot of that has to do with their very, very healthy regions. There are regions like the Denver area, where people go out hiking all the time. They're in the mountains. Every weekend right. is activity. Obesity doesn't really exist. Diabetes is uncommon. Cigarette smoking, uncommon. You, you know, we have a lot of bad habits in South Louisiana. It's part of what makes South Louisiana fun. <laughs> we, we eat food. We go to crawfish boils where there's a lot of salt. People, unfortunately, smoke a lot. We are exposed to a lot of fats. Genetically, we may have predisposition to heart disease. So there are many things that we have to overcome, but I'm quite confident we can. Uh, heart disease is something that can be prevented. It is simply something that we have to address early, educate people, and have them make proper choices. You, you won't remember this, but I do. My first interview with you years ago, you mentioned myocardial infarction. And after the interview, I went, what is that? You mm -hmm. said, it's a heart attack. That's <laughs> so, right. So you educated us ever since then. But uh, it's been a, quite mm -hmm. an education, has it? It has. But you know, myocardial infarction is exactly what we're trying to prevent. This is what kills people. This and the arrhythmias that come uh, when the heart starves for blood. Now, a myocardial infarction um, occurs when heart muscle actually dies because it doesn't have enough blood supply. But before that happens, we have ischemia. And ischemia means it's simply starving. Now, that can give us chest pain or it can give us things which we simply don't recognize. It can be indigestion, it can be shortness of breath, it can be a feeling like we're going to pass out, it can be jaw pain, arm pain. It doesn't have to be typical squeezing chest discomfort, which is how we think of angina, and it's not always that severe. Many people simply think they're having indigestion and they right. blow off the symptoms. Nonetheless, it's something we should not blow off. We should pay attention to it, we should get it evaluated, and there's a lot we can do for it in today's world. There's been a great partnership between you all and, and Terrebonne General Medical Center, but events that help promote heart health, can you go over those with us? Yes. Uh, obviously, we would like to see people eat right, exercise routinely, not smoke. These things are very important, and we, along with Terrebonne General, sponsor many different events, and you can see some of those here uh, coming up, there's going to be the fourth annual Home of Heart and Souls Half Marathon and 5K. It's going to be Saturday, November uh, 16th at 7 a.m. at the Home of Terrebonne Civic Center. And there'll be a half marathon race, a two-man relay at 6.55 miles per person, and a 5K walk uh, run that goes for 3.1 miles. What we want to do is we really want to bring attention to this problem, Martin. If we can get people to address the problem and say, you know what, we choose to be healthy. We choose to improve our lot over uh, others. We, we won't smoke. We will control our cholesterol. We will control blood pressure. 
uh, we will do a better job with our diabetes, then I really think we can uh, yet make a further dent in this huge problem, which is still, unfortunately, the number one cause of death in our area. And we're going to bring up on the screen, too, how to get more information about this uh, big marathon. But as we close, I see more and more people who are trying to get healthy, who are going into races. And I think a large part of that is what CIS and Terrebonne General Medical Center have done. So the marketing aspect of it has worked, hasn't it? I, I do think it's very important. I will caution people, don't just go out though, uh, especially if you've not exercised and you have uh, risk factors for heart disease, get evaluated first. Mm -hmm. uh, James Fix even wrote a book stating that there was no need to check yourself, just start running. And he really professed that until the day he dropped dead of his heart attack. Okay, and I yeah. think it's very, very important that if you have risk factors, if your family uh, history is that people died suddenly at your same age, or if uh, you've been a smoker, or if you've had diabetes, or if your blood pressure's been high, it's real simple to get those things evaluated and to get yourself on a healthier track. All right, for more information about heart health and the home of heart and the Souls Half Marathon and 5K, there you see it right there. You can call Terrebonne General Medical Center at 985-873-4616, or you see the website on the bottom of the screen, or you could uh, visit Terrebonne General, and they'll give you more information on this big event. But Dr. Walker, thanks again. 30 years. And uh, you're not tired yet, you're still going strong. <laughs> yeah, I like what I do, and, and that's real simple. I'm, I'm asked by a lot of people when I'm gonna, going to retire, and I tell them I've never thought about it. And I, that's really true, I have not. Um, I, I like what I do. I don't plan to change anything. I, uh, I wish sometimes the regulations were less onerous. Yeah. <laughs> we have plenty of those in, in our society, but I really do like what I do. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations again, and we'll see you here soon. Thank you, Martin. Once again, Dr. Craig Walker. We'll take a break. When we come back, more bite time. Don't go away.